The Midnight Gospel, made by Duncan Trussell and Pendleton Ward, is a podcast mixed with a cartoon, where the main character Clancy travels around the multiverse interviewing interesting people about their life, meditation, death, experiences, and the focus of today's video, Be Here Now. This is the last line of Season 1, and I've been thinking about it every single day since I've seen the finale. What does it mean to be here now? What would life be like if I lived it following those ideas? And why do they choose to end the season with it? The concept of be here now is to live in the moment, to center yourself, not to be living in the past or the future, but to focus on this one moment. And it's often done through a learned skill of focusing on the breath. Try it real quick. The idea here is that by focusing on your breath, it's an experience that's happening now within your body. This takes your attention and brings it somewhere under your control. And then when you let it go, it flitters away to somewhere else. And then you can bring it right back again. By doing so, that letting go of attention and bringing it back is an experience of meditation. And that experience of bringing your attention to something is the idea of be here now. The goal is to be able to place your attention wherever you want, whenever you want, and not have it slip away somewhere. It's similar to being able to control the in-game camera in a game like Red Dead Online. When playing the game in first person, I see my hands, the back of the horse's head, where I'm going, I hear the sound of the water, it's a very immersive experience. And when I be here now, it's like suddenly being pulled into third person, where I can see myself as more than just where I'm going, but where I am in my story. What am I looking like? What do other people see when they look at me? What does the horse look like? And as I continue to go into this moment, suddenly it's like a cinematic view in the game. I'm no longer just in my story. I'm now a character in the story of the wilderness. I see the trees move, the amber waves of grain. This does not mean that first person is not something you can do and be here now. I mean, right now, watching this page, do you see the outsides of the screen? Do you see the YouTube watch page while you're watching? Walling out excess thoughts is a form of being here now. You're focused on this experience happening right here. To fully experience be here now is to be aware of which camera you're in. Are you in first? Are you in third? Are you in a cinematic view? And being able to move between them at will and when you think you need the benefit of the more immersed versus the more story focused experience. As you begin to master those things, it opens up these new perspectives and three values that you can get to improve your happiness in life by being here now. The first value is the concept known as savoring, and it's connected to the idea of happiness psychology, which is the study of what makes people happy and then how to apply those things to other people to make them more happy. Specifically with the idea of gratitude, there was a Kazurkastat video popping up that talked a lot about the value of gratitude and how it makes your life better. Savoring and gratitude are very much alone. Have you ever had a meal with someone and you're having a great conversation but you take a bite of something so delicious it just breaks your concentration and suddenly all you can think about is that delicious food you're having? Life sometimes serves us things like that. Like if you achieve something, you got into the school you wanted, you got that grade you wanted, you got that job you wanted. And for a while, you just have this high that you're like, yes, this is so good, and everything around you is just better. Over time, we align back to a new normal, where suddenly the new job, the new school, that grade, that just becomes what you're expecting to happen next. And although that's still good, it's certainly not that savor deliciousness. When I be here now, I savor at will. It's this moment of realization that I'm enjoying what I'm doing. If I apply it to right now, I get to be making a video for friends, for new friends potentially, that I think might be able to help people feel better and help me feel better, and it's my hobby, and I'm happy now. And that is what savoring is, and that's what the first thing of Be Here Now is. It allows you to have that delicious moment at will. This is awesome, and it's only the first of the three values. The second advantage comes in the form of a defense mechanism. There's a term in therapy known as spiraling, where you think about something like, oh, politics are making me sad, and oh, well, the people in politics aren't very good, and they have ideas that I don't like, and there are people I know personally who I think they shouldn't agree with that, but they do agree with that, and that makes me sad, and I want to change their opinions on making them feel smarter and being better, but they disagree with it, and that makes me feel powerless, and now I'm hopeless, and I can't fix them, and this sucks, and that is what a spiral is like. 
A swirly slide of depression that leads from bad thought, bad thought, bad thought to bad thought. This exists because of chemical tags in the brain. You see, whenever you have an emotional experience and you remember it, your brain assigns a little emotion tag to it. So if you're really happy and something great happens to you, when you're happy again later, it's easier to remember the happy. The alternative is true too. When you're sad and something sad happens to you, it becomes easier to remember that sad thing later when you're sad again. So you're happy, happy thoughts easier. Harder to remember the sad. Sad, sad thoughts easier, harder to remember the happy. And this creates this spiraling down experience. Be here now is like a sign at the top of the swirly slide being like, hey, do you want to go on this slide right now? And suddenly me being like, huh. You see, because it's an awareness of the state you are in, the place you are, it helps you realize before you hop down that slide that you might not want to hop down that slide, or you might want to think differently about the slide that you're on. I've even had situations where it's like it dries the slide so much that I'm sliding down and it hurts real bad and I stop halfway down it, and then I get back up that slide and know that it's okay, I avoided the sliding. And that's the second of the three values that you get. The next value is the extra perspective that you get when you be here now. A journey of a million miles starts with a single step, right? But sometimes even while we're doing it, every step kind of just feels like you're at a standstill. Be here now is like applying a big red arrow to yourself on a map and being like, hey, you are here, you've gone this far, you have this much farther to go, and you are on pace. Without that information, it at times feels like I am stuck and unable to move forward and I'm frustrated that I have yet to move as far as I wanted to. But that big red arrow and big red line on the map really helps me identify where I am and makes me proud of how I've got there. I expect there are other values besides those three that I've found so far, and I really look forward to finding out more as I continue to think about this. As for why Midnight Gospel ended with this phrase, it seems like it's going to be both the beginning and ending of understanding and meditation. That me being able to be at a point now is going to be just as important as me years from now being at a point again then. Good luck being here now. See you.